This is one of the most controversial statements that Jesus said. Happy are the pure in heart, for they will see God. They will see God. Now let me ask you this question this morning. You don't need to raise it, your hand, but how many of you have a pure heart? Who amongst you have a pure heart? If we ask this question to ourselves, the reality we show us no one is as pure as we want it to be. But the purity of our heart is a declaration from God to all of us. At the same time that God declares us justified, He declares that we are forgiven, He declares that we are holy, He also declares that we have pure heart. It is not us that we can make our hearts pure, but it's God who purifies our hearts. As we just seen this song, purify my heart, let me be as you, let me be as gold, pure gold. But in order to be pure as gold, you know the process of purifying the gold. You have to go into the fire to eliminate all the things that are not belonging to the elements of gold. In this illustration of purifying gold, we are here to be under the fire, the holy fire of God. To purify our hearts. Now many of us doesn't like to be in the fire. Many of us doesn't go, want to go to the process of purification. But that's necessary in order to see God in our life. What do you want to see these days in your life? If I ask you, what do you want to see in your life today? What do you want to see in your life tomorrow? What are you expecting for tomorrow's life? What are you expecting for Monday morning? What kind of life do you think that tomorrow will be for you? If you are a Christian, a believer of Christ, and you are looking for God's favor and, and blessing today, what do you expect for tomorrow? What kind of life do you expect to, for tomorrow? I hope that all of you expect that tomorrow morning you will have a happy morning. You will have a happy more Monday. In the middle of people, in the middle of a society that they hate mon Monday. They hate Monday morning, go back to work, go back to business, go back to reality. The weekend is over, party is over. Time with family is over, time with friends is over, time with, for yourself is over. It's now time to work, it's now time to study, it's now time to dedicate for other things that are no part of your willing, part of other people's willing, or your life growing willing. The Beatitudes, that's the secret of happiness, to start every week every new week, every new day with a happy heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, notice that this promise of Jesus is in future tense. They will see God. And in fact, one day we will see God. And we will see God in heaven. But what about now? Can we see God? How anyone see God? Actually, Jesus said that no one has seen God, but it's by Him that He declared it visible for all of us. So we see Jesus, and we see God in Jesus, and Jesus in God. He said to His disciples, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. How can you ask? He said to one of His disciples, show me the Father. If anyone can see Jesus today in your life, you can see God. And, it's, and you have to start to see the cross of Jesus. When you see the Beatitudes, the first thing you have to see is the cross of Christ. Because it's in the very cross of Christ that you can see Jesus. And if you can see Jesus, His grace, His love for you, His life, and His sacrifice for you, then you can see God in your life. As we study these Beatitudes, we have the gold, the ultimate purpose of keeping this commandment, these words, these beatitudes, to be like Jesus. And in fact, we will be like Him. But it's a process of grow, growing up. It's a process of climbing up to heaven. In a stairway to heaven. And we are starting seeking faith. This is our first step in going up to God. And how we seek first the kingdom of God? By the brokenness of our heart. 
knowing that we are in bankrupt spiritually, in need, in need of God's favor. Without God, without, without God's grace and God's forgiveness, we cannot start a Christian life. We cannot bore again. We need to realize that God forgive all our sins, past, present, and future, to understand that now we have a new life. Seek first the kingdom of God, says Jesus, and his righteousness means that we are looking for not our righteousness, but the righteousness of God imputed in us. And as God declares us righteous by faith, then we start our process, our journey in this pilgrim progress to our final destination, the celestial city in heaven. We are right now in this process. Blessed are the pure in the spirit, says Jesus, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now we are the members of the kingdom of God. But the second thing that we have to do is continually repent for our sins. Repent for what we are doing, what we, are, we, are, we have done. It's already forgiven. But every day we commit a sin as we are not perfectly pure, not completely holy, but we are in the process of sanctification. We mourn for our sins. Blessed are those who mourn, St. Jesus, because they will be comforted. There is forgiveness. And Jesus says that he is faithful and righteous to forgive all our sins. Then the next step is obedience. To submit our life in obedience to God. Because there is a, a way to be happy. And that you can be and feel the most happy person when you see that you are ob obeying God. That you see that you are giving and surrender your life to God. Blessed are the meek, says the Lord Jesus. They are happy. Then pursue for be filled with the Holy Spirit. Blessed are those who are hunger and hungry and thirsty of righteousness. Looking for more of God, pursuing God in your life. Have this desire to more of His blessing, more of His presence, more of His word, more of His spirit, more of His likeness, more of His kingdom in your life. Expectation of every day, more and more and more, instead of to be satisfied. But if we know, we know that there's nothing that can satisfy in this world because our life needs to be filled. Our emptiness needs to be filled with the word of the Holy Spirit, with the presence of God. And we grow up in holiness. And that's why Jesus said, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful because they will be shown mercy. So as you now be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can start your ministry. You can start to minister to others and show mercy as you have received mercy. Then you can see God as today we say in the scripture, blessed are the pure in heart because they will see God. To Next week we will talk about to be blessed as we are peacemakers, evangelists, to share the gospel among the nations. And as we prepare the good news, peace comes to our life because we are fulfilling us our life. And finally, we will be ready to endure all kind of persecution, all kind of criticism, because blessed are those who are persecuted. Great will be the reward in heaven. We are in the process to be like him, to be like Jesus. And you can't start from today. You can do it now. It's God's will and God's blessing for you every day. But let's focus today only on this sentence. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. Now, how can we pursue for purity in our hearts? And who can be declared pure? <clears throat> pure in heart. Well, if we want to seek who is the person that God declared pure, or a person that <clears throat> God is interesting, is we have to go back to the scripture in the Old Testament because God, as he said, and confirm in the New Testament, he is happy with the person who have his heart same like God. He is looking for someone who have a heart after God. And who could be that person? Well, let me introduce you to David. Yes, this little shepherd, David, in the Old Testament, who once became the king of the Jews, the king of Israel. He was a man after God's heart. Because of what God declared to the prophet Samuel. He said that after he rejected Saul as a king, 
he, the Lord, has sought out a man, and this man is David, after his own heart. But we know David's story. We know what kind of man he was. He was a liar. He was a killer. He was a, 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 a murderer. He, he committed many sins. And it's, it was David who himself, he wrote Psalms. And in one of his Psalms, he said about the pure heart, Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God's his Savior. Later, his son Solomon will say in Proverbs, Who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean and without sin? David know what is to be clean, what is to have a pure heart. And he recognized that he himself, he doesn't have a pure heart. He cannot climb to the mount of, of, of God with clean hands as he remembered his sins. He knew his profile. He knew that in front of people and in front of the society, in front of his kingdom, in front of God, he was a man. That once, yes, he was declared man after God's own heart, but then he became a rapist. He became a murderer. He, he was a hero, yes, but he was a poly, poly, polygamy. He was a failure as a king, as a father. Even though he has some talents as a musician, he was a warrior, he was passionate, he was a shepherd, but he ignores God too. But at the end, God declared a successful king. God declared a, a, a man who have his own heart. Amazing. And we are like this king, David. And we have to confess as he confessed because there was no any good thing in David, but there's only one sin that he was pursuing for God. He was seeking God. He was asking for his blessing because he knew that without God, he cannot live any moment. He cannot live anymore without his grace, without his Love without his spirit and without his heart, the heart of God. And that's why he said in Psalms 51, verse 10, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew the step of the spirit within me. It was David who, who asked God, Create in me a pure heart. He knows that he, in his heart, he doesn't have a pure heart. He himself cannot make a pure heart. So he asked God, Give me a pure heart, O God. It is you who can give me a pure heart, no myself. No one else in this world can purify my God, only you. And that's why God accepted David's repentance. And even though he had to face the consequences of his mistake, the consequences of his sin, God still declared as a person who has his own heart. Why? Because that was the very reason that God called David. Remember when Samuel went to to annoy David, the Lord was appointing David, not because of this, his attributes of his talent as, as the, pro, the prophet Samuel, he go first to the, the older brothers, and the second and third, looking at that, yes, this probably must be the chosen one because he's handsome, he's strong, he's, he has some, some kind of, of, of talents, wisdom, but God said like this, the Lord does not look at the sins that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God looked at the heart of David before he became king, before he was anointed, before he committed adultery with Bexheba, before he let his son be killed. Before all this mistake that he did in his ministry, in his kingdom, God knew David's heart. And even though he anointed, because he knew that David, he would repent. He will come back to God. He will pursue more for him. He will endure persecution for being faithful to God. Now, what we have to learn from David, as today we try to be pure in heart, as Jesus come in. We have to understand that there are some kind of purity that we have to be aware of first. John MacArthur, in his book, The Beatitudes, he shared five kind of purity. And he, tells, he says first, the, there's a prim, primitive purity. The primitive purity is only belong to God. That's the primitive purity. Before creation, before everything exists, was God. And God was pure. That was the primitive purity. But then there was a creative purity. That all the creation, 
they were created pure. And as God created the world, he said, everything is good. So that's the created purity. But then, the man commits a sin, and we have the ultimate purity. That is the glorification purity. That all the sins were we've forgiven, and all sins were made new, again, a new creation, new heavens, new earth. That would be the glorification day. That all the saints, those believe in Jesus Christ, will be complete and pure, as John 3, 3 2 says, will be like him. That's the ultimate purity. And then we have the position of purity that God inputs in us today. The position of purity when we believe in Jesus. So God declares you pure. God declares you righteous. God declares you holy. God de declares you forgiven. Because he imputes in you his purity. You have the position of purity. But what we have to learn today is the practical purity. That is the one that we all have to warn it. That is living purity and with pure motive. That's the hard part. That's the hard work. How we can live or keep our purity. How can we have pure motive to live in? Because deceitful is the heart, and our heart's tendency is all the time to do evil. It's, it's hard to, to practice purity every day. It's a way of our nature. It's not part of our nature. We were born as a sinful people. How can we purify ourselves? How can we pursue purity? How can we have a practical purity in our life? For us, it's impossible. But for God, it's possible. God is still finding a new David today. And here in CEM. Let's see what's the heart of David. If you want to practice your purity or have a practical purity, you have to have the same heart of David. David, he was faithful and righteous Upright in heart. In other words, he let God minister here, forgive him, and declare him right and lift him up again. Raise him up again in faith, in communion with him. David, as King 870 says, who was the father of Solomon. Solomon declares, My father David have in his heart to build a temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. He have a heart for ministry people who have a place to worship. David have a heart to build a place to worship. And also, Psalms 9, 1 says, he prays God. He gives sense to God. The God who knows his heart. And also, Psalms 13, 5, David said, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. He understood that salvation. He understood and gave sense for his salvation. He rejoiced. He had the joy of salvation. Then Psalms 90, 14 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. They we have a heart to meditate in God's word every day. That's the way he have a practical purity. And then in Psalms 27, 8, say, My heart says to you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Because blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty of righteousness. In Psalms 119, verse 11, the, the Bible says, I have hidden your words in my heart that I might not sin against you. So if you want to Practice your purity. You, have, you want to have a practical purity. That's the very thing that you need to do. And you need to do here in church, in CM. One, two, recognize God's righteousness, God's forgiveness, God's salvation in your life. To dedicate, to build this place of worship. Go and evangelize. Bring more people here. Make this ministry a ministry for people to worship. David have this heart that to build a temple of God because many people can come and worship God there. And this temple was... Built by his own son, who also declared that his father have a heart to build the temple and to praise God, as he prays God and gives sense for his salvation, and he also meditating his promise day and night. He have a heart to seek God's faith, because blessed are the pure in the spirit, pure in heart, because they will see God. 
if you seek God, if you seek His face, you will see God's face. We are here to find in you, David. God is, high, is, God is here to find David. God is finding David, and I as a pastor had to find David in you. Because that's what the Bible said in 8, 30, 22. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. God has a plan for you. God wants you to practice your purity as you evangelize, as you go for me, as you bring more people to church, as you seek for God's blessing and, and be filled with His Spirit and share the gospel of peace and meditate in His Word day and night. Then He will purify you because the cross of Jesus will be in the middle of your attitude and it will become in you a living beatitude. Of course, we are sinners. Of course, we will sin. But we don't need to worry about our sinfulness. Actually, be pure in heart means not all the sins that you have to acknowledge. You have to be aware that you can be sinless, but you can sin less. You can be sinless because nobody can be sinless, and only Jesus was sinless in this world. But you can sin less. As you dedicate, you put in action your purity. You dedicate more to God, to study the world, to evangelize, to preach, to share the gospel, to, to, to counsel other people. If you are active in all these things, then you, will, you don't have time to sin. You don't have time to think about the devil's temptation because you are busy. David was able to commit adultery because he was lazy. He stayed in his palace and, and enjoyed his blessing, and then he committed a sin. If he was in war, he didn't have a time to sin against God. We all are sinless, but we can sin less. So today, let's become like David, a man after God's own heart. In Chronicles 28, 9, the Bible says, For the Lord search every heart and understand every motive behind the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. What is the person who has the heart of God? Is the person who seeks God, who, who seeks for his kingdom, who seeks for his righteousness, who, are, who is thirsty and righteous and, and thirsty of righteousness, who is me, who mourns for his sin, who, who who also is merciful and pure in heart and peacemaker and endures all kind of persecution because of God's sake. What kind of heart do you have? What kind of heart are you pursuing? Do you hear the beat of God in you? Is your heart beating like God is beating? Touch your heart right now. Hear to your heart. Does it have the same reading of beating for this war? Because God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now, if you paraphrase and you change this Bible verse, I hope it's not a blasphemy, and you put your name on it, you will say, For God so loved the world that He gave Christian, or your name, to this world that whoever believes in what God is speaking through us they will not perish but have eternal life. In other words, if you are representing Jesus, if you are like Jesus in this world, then God is working the gospel in you. God is preaching through you. God is evangelizing through you. God is reaching more people and bringing to Christ's cross more people through you. And you have the heart of God. Then you don't need to worry about sins. Then you need to worry about your mistakes. Then you don't need to worry about your past because you have heart like God. Let God put his heart in us. Let God change our heart. Change my heart, O oh God. May it be like you. Let's all put our hearts in God's hand. So as a clay, we can be mold in Jesus' image, in Jesus' likeness. And we can all be like him, living the Beatitudes every day in Jesus' name. Let's pray.